When we introduce the epsilon delta definition of continuity, link in the description to that lesson, we also talked about these other three equivalent characterizations of continuity. Now most of them are more or less the same thing in different packaging, but the one that was substantially different is the sequential definition of continuity. This says that our function f would be continuous at a point c if for all sequences in the domain that converge to c, it follows that the sequence of their images under the function converges to f of c. Today we'll prove that indeed this sequential definition of continuity is equivalent to the others. Now when c is not a limit point of our domain, the proofs here are going to be pretty easy. When c is a limit point, and so this limit definition of continuity applies, it's very obviously equivalent to the epsilon delta definition. The epsilons and deltas really just come from the definition of a functional limit. And using the functional limit definition will be very handy because we've previously proven a very similar result regarding sequences and how they can be used to define a functional limit. So by using our previous connection between function limits and sequences, we'll be able to connect sequences and continuity. First, we will assume that our function is continuous and prove what we could call property one here about the sequences. So let's let f be a function from some subset of the reals a to the reals, and we'll let it be continuous at this real number c. Now, if C is not a limit point of A, then property one is trivially true because there can't be a sequence converging to C if C isn't a limit point of the domain. So the for all sequences converging to C would apply to no sequences whatsoever, so it would be vacuously true. Then we can move on to the non-trivial case where C is a limit point of the domain, which means that our limit definition of continuity applies. So, the limit of f of x as x approaches c must equal f of c, because we're assuming that f is continuous at c. But then, by our previous result, connecting sequence limits and function limits, again, link in the description to that video, for every sequence in the domain that converges to that limit point c, the sequence of images must converge to the function's value at that limit point c. And that conclusion is precisely property one that we wanted to prove. So if our function is continuous at a point c, then it is the case that for every sequence in the domain converging to c, it follows that the sequence of images under the function converges to the image of c under the function. Again, the key to the argument is just our previous result that says this sequence stuff is true if the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals f of c. There is one side note I should make here. When we proved this result connecting sequence limits and functional limits, we had the assumption that every term of the sequence was not equal to the limit point c because we were talking about functional limits. We wanted to approach c but not have x equal c. Now, in this case, it's totally fine if xn is equal to c, but that does not present any complications because certainly if xn is equal to c, then its image will equal f of c. So that's not going to have an effect on a sequence's convergence. Point being, we're actually allowing sequences here whose terms are f of c. Those certainly are not gonna cause any problems regarding the convergence. Now, proving the converse is just the same argument, but in reverse. We assume that for every sequence in the domain that converges to C, the sequence of images converges to the image of C. We're assuming that. But then, by our previously proven result connecting sequence limits to functional limits, that means that the limit of f of x as x approaches C must equal f of C but that is the limit definition of continuity. So F is continuous at C. Once more, I'll mention when we proved the sequence result, we were assuming that each term XN was not equal to C, but if you go back to that proof and allow XN to equal C, the proof still works. It doesn't cause any issues. In conclusion, we've proven that if a function is continuous at C, then for every sequence in the domain converging to C, the sequence of the images 
converges to the image of C. So no matter how you try to approach C on the X axis, the images will be approaching the function's image at C. This of course also gives us a handy criterion for determining that a function is not continuous at some point C. We would just need to find a sequence in the domain converging to C, but whose images do not converge to F of C. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson where we try doing that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these real analysis videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching. Instead of